Good morning guys, I hope you're all well today. I'm still ill, I've still got a sore throat and a sniffly nose, so sorry if you can hear that during the video. Today's video is about ADHD, as you can obviously tell from the title. I don't believe I've spoken about ADHD in any of my videos before. I might have had a slight mention of them, but I haven't done any videos on ADHD specifically. But in my autism assessment, which was two years ago now, I believe, and in my university assessment where I got diagnosed with dyspraxia and things like that, like learning needs assessment, like a learning disability assessment, they both highlighted um, the possibility of me having ADHD or ADD, but I think they're both diagnosed as the same thing now. Um, so in the one where I had my disability assessment for university, she actually did the first stage of the ADHD assessment and I scored high on that. I haven't got the assessment with me like it possibly might be on my laptop that I have here because I do keep all of these for evidence with like jobs and stuff um, which is kind of why I'm making this video at the same time but um, both of those assessments did bring up the possibility of ADHD but of if you live in the UK or probably anywhere you probably know that it is quite hard to get a diagnosis of ADHD yeah so I've just managed to find it on my laptop and in the report that I had at university it says in response to a checklist based on DSM criteria for ADHD it was noted that Savannah has long-standing behavioral traits which strongly suggest that she may have an attention deficit disorder these difficulties include difficulties with attention, attention concentration, impulsivity and hyperactivity. These are having an effect on her daily life, work and studies. Possible indicators include she often fails to give enough attention to details. She sometimes skim reads and misses the point. She fails to notice changes in people's appearances that others will notice. If she is listening to the same person or is involved in the same activity for too long, her mind will wander after a very short time. This can be after as little as five minutes. She sometimes appears not to be listening when others speak to her. She says that she tends to not look them in the eye. She has trouble organising materials for studying. She is reluctant to get started on things that she finds difficult, such as maths related activities and assignments that she may find challenging. She often misplaces items. She gets very easily distracted by external stimuli, but also by her own thoughts. She often fidgets and in long group settings or lectures will need to leave her seat multiple times. During the assessment process, she rocked in her chair swiveled the chair from side to side and flapped her hands quite frequently. She often feels bored and restless and, and at night tosses and turns as her thoughts keep going round and round. She says she sometimes talk excessively and people can't get a word in. She often blurts out answers before questions are completed, so sometimes answers the wrong thing. She often interrupts or butts in conversation. She says she assumes she knows what people are going to say. She can be very impatient waiting in queues and shops and gets very restless if she is on a bus in heavy traffic. So the person that did that um, initial thing couldn't actually diagnose ADHD like she wasn't a trained person. So that is just in my general disability report that those things might be related to ADHD. And I haven't really since like this... Um, report I believe was done in 2017. My autism assessment was also in 2017 so that was the year where I got a lot of my diagnosis aside from mental health issues and things like that and I haven't since then I haven't really paid much attention to it like in university those were issues that were really bothering me and since I left uni I didn't really think there was any reason for me to like worry about those sort of things especially because my primary sort of issues revolve around autism um but in my current job now like my new job i've only been there like what a month and they've already noticed some of these things that correlate with adhd so with my current job because it's a council based job we have loads and loads and loads and loads of training like we've been on loads of training already like this week we had four 
um, days of training. The week before we had two, the week before that there was one. So there's um, quite a lot of opportunities at the moment where I'm in a large group setting, there's like 20 of us, 16 of us, 30 of us, whatever, where it's kind of like university based and you have to concentrate on the one person and it's not like uni where you're there for 40 minutes and then you walk to another lecture and you have a bit of a thing like a bit of a gap we had training that's nine hours long in the same room with the same person and that's something i really struggle with i have paid attention in all of the training and i love sort of learning new things and like educating myself and stuff so i always pay attention um, but in my current job you have a supervision every two weeks for six months and then after the six month period you just do it every six months I think or every month I don't really know but um, yeah so in that supervision it was brought up that they believed that I wasn't listening in training and I wasn't concentrating or focusing or paying attention or whatever um, and that set me quite a lot in that supervision like I got quite like upset and was crying and stuff because I don't actually think that this sort of stuff affects me and it was also the fact that I was actually a p paying attention in all that training and stuff and it just felt like people thought I wasn't and that's obviously not nice if they think you're doing something that you're not and then it just made me sit there and realize I went back through these reports and I was like well actually everything that they're saying correlates to ADHD I've got it written here that that could be a possibility and there's something written in my autism assessment as well but I can't pull that up obviously on here to read and I was like actually there might be something going on and the problem is with work um, and in professional settings university settings things like that they people don't tend to listen to you or provide the help you need unless you have it on paper unless you have a diagnosis of something um so i've got a doctor's appointment on the 13th of november to possibly bring up getting referred for an adhd assessment i'm not optimistic that i will be referred um because i know there's a massive stigma about adhd in adults and adults don't tend to get diagnosed and i'm probably gonna if i did get referred i probably wouldn't get diagnosed until like two three years time from now because the NHS has long waiting lists and it's stretched. A private assessment for ADHD is a lot of money. I think it was like seven or 800, the closest one to me, just for like the assessment that wasn't like medication or follow-ups or whatever. And I just don't have that money to spend on an ADHD assessment. So I would have to go the NHS way. And I'm not in university anymore. My autism one was done for a university who referred me on to an aid an autism assessment clinic so I didn't really have to I didn't wait I only waited just over a year and I didn't need to pay anything so obviously that was ideal but now um, I'm obviously going through the NHS route so I'm not sure how well that's gonna go I am really anxious about the appointment because I don't think they're gonna believe me or try and refer me or anything but I've found online like the nice guidelines and things for ADHD and it does say that a doctor isn't trained to diagnose like a GP isn't di like trained to diagnose ADHD so they should refer you to someone if you believe you have it but here we go might have to go to another doctor and try again um so fingers crossed I will make a video on that so just for all those that aren't really sure what ADHD is because um there is a lot of stigma about what ADHD is and a lot of people imagine small children being very hyperactive and whatnot so on the NHS website, because obviously I am based in the UK, ADHD is described as a behavioural disorder that includes symptoms of inattentiveness, hyperactivity and impulsiveness. And then it says symptoms of ADHD can be categorised into two types of behavioural problems, inattentiveness and hyperactivity. Most people with ADHD have problems that fall into both but this is not always the case. Some people with the condition may have problems with inattentiveness, but not with hyperactivity or impulsiveness. This form of ADHD is known as attention deficit disorder. Um, ADD can sometimes go unnoticed because the symptoms may be less obvious, but apparently they don't diagnose ADD anymore in certain areas, so I'm not quite sure whether my area does. The symptoms in... Um, adults for ADHD it says the 
symptoms of ADHD persist from childhood into a person's teenage years and then into adulthood. Any additional problems or conditions experienced with ADHD, such as depression or dyslexia, may also continue into adulthood and then it says by the age of 25 15% of people diagnosed with ADHD as a child have a full range of symptoms and 65% have symptoms that affect their daily life and then it says adult symptoms tend to be far more subtle than childhood sy symptoms these include carelessness and lack of attention to detail um, continually starting new tasks before finishing old ones poor organisation skills, inability to focus or prioritise, continuously losing or misplacing things, forgetfulness, restlessness and edginess, difficulty keeping quiet and speaking out of turn, blurting out responses and interrupting others, mood swings, irritability and a quick temper, inability to deal with stress, extreme impatience, taking risks and activities with little or no regard to personal safety or the safety of others. And then it says related conditions, include personality disorders, bipolar and OCD. It also says behavioural problems associated with ADHD can cause problems such as difficulties with relationships and social interactions. So that's just a little overview of what ADHD is. I've never talked about this before in a video, I don't think, so please put your your own experiences of ADHD down in the comments or if you have ADHD yourself, share your story if you're happy to do that I love reading everybody's comments I read all of them I need to I can't reply to all of them anymore because I do get quite a lot so I do send a little heart or a like on them once I've read them so I'll go through some of those later today please put your video request down in the comments because I always need video ideas I'd go blank sometimes and then I can't make a video so please put video requests down I hope everyone has a good week next week see you soon guys bye